Hi there, this is Linda Lindsay, and we are on Google Rocks number 25, uh, continuing the discussion about ISTE. And uh, last week, um, someone said it would be cool to have Brett Tanaka come on and talk about special interest groups, um, it, uh, most, more specifically um, SIG uh, 1 to 1, and we'll find out more about that. Um, and he, uh, first, what we'll do is um, introduce um, Brett, and also uh, we'll start with Brett. We also have our regulars here, Anne and, and Michelle, and let, I'll let them introduce themselves. But um, Brett, could you tell us who you are, please? Uh, aloha, I'm Brett Tanaka. I'm the uh, educational specialist with the Hawaii Department of Education um, from the Office of Curriculum Instruction and Student Support. Um, in addition, I'm also the past president of the Hawaii Society for Technology in Education, which is our local ISTE affiliate. And uh, I'm glad to be on tonight and looking forward to talking about SIG one to one. Awesome. Okay, um, Anne? Okay, hi, I'm Anne. I'm the librarian at Kalani High School. And I know nothing, so I want to learn a lot. Thank you. <laughs> Awesome. Michelle? Hi, I'm Michelle Colt. I'm a librarian at Halekula Elementary School. Great. Okay, so what I want to do is to share with you first uh, how to get to ISTE. And let me get that um, up on the screen. I thought I was ready, but oh, yes, I am ready. So, <laughs> um, Okay, get that up. Sorry. Okay, so if you go to isti.org, uh, this is what you'll get. And hold on a second now. Sorry, I thought I was prepared. Okay, so this is what you will get if you go to isti.org, and it's an organization that. Um, and am I showing everything? Can you see that? Is it showing to you? Okay. Um, yeah, it's a great organization. That's an ed tech organization. Um, you can learn all about it by looking at the different tabs. Um, and what we're going to be talking about, and it costs, well, the first thing is how much does it cost to um, join? That is always a question. So here we have um, the different levels that are available. Um, but I would say probably if I were a regular person, I would uh, choose the standard, um, which gives you quite a few different kinds of um, um, benefits, except for you need to subscribe to um, for extra money for these different kinds of uh, features like the Archives, Journal of Research on Technology and Education, and the other journal. Um, but generally speaking, I think the $109 uh, U.S. price is a pretty reasonable for a ed tech organization, and the cool thing about it is when you join, you get to you can join any of the special interest groups. So um, make sure that's showing. Okay, um, yeah, and so these are the different ones that are available, and there are quite a few. So it's it's neat that uh, the one that Brett is going to be talking about tonight, the one to one is the first one listed. Um, I myself would be of course interested in the librarians one which is the SIG Lib and what happens is um, and Brett will talk more about it is that you'll get different kinds of um, things that come down the pike. You have an opportunity to uh, uh, meet um, people who are interested in the same topics and connect in different ways. So it's a great uh, way to be in an organization and focus in on different um, different um, special interest groups, which is what SIG is all about. That's what it stands for. I would probably also be interested in the online learning and the mobile learning. In fact, I think Michelle might have mentioned earlier, either in this Google Rocks or maybe an EdTech Next Plate, about a um, webinar or online um, conference that's coming on, so maybe she'll mention about that. Okay, so let's see if I can get back to myself. 
Alrighty. So Britt, um, you're going to be you are a member of the SIG One to One, correct? That is correct. And could you tell us a little bit about what it does to the novice? What what SIG One to One does, and what is One to One? Okay. Um, maybe before I actually get into the details about the SIG, is I give you a little bit of background on how I actually. Uh, I, I got involved with the SIG one to one. Um, uh, it it, it kind of goes back with, um, as I mentioned at the beginning, that I was the past president for the Hawaii Society for Technology in Education, and um, we're actually a relatively young uh, affiliate in terms of we're only about two two and a half years old, to something to that effect, and. Um, Basically, my task was really to help grow the organization because, you know, when we started, we really did not have any uh, structure to the organization in terms of what we do and that sort of thing. And so, um, basically, last year, as I kind of explored what ISTE was about, um, I actually had an opportunity to go to the ISTE conference over in San Antonio, and that was the first time ever attending uh, ISTE, and um, I really got to see firsthand what the organization is about, and basically that was my first time uh, finding out about the special interest groups, and um, basically, uh, as you, sh you showed in the beginning, there's about 25 of them. Uh, it's my understanding that the stake one to one is one of the newer ones, and so, um, so initially I kind of didn't put a whole lot of, I guess, time or interest in it, other than that I knew what it was. But um, what had happened was um, through the, our affiliate efforts, we, um, I met um, the Alaska Society for Technology in Education uh, president. His, his name, his name is uh, Mark Stanley. And I met him actually over at the uh, ISTX San Antonio conference. And so we were just having a conversation. Um, he actually came down to our conference, which is uh, the Schools of the Future conference, which I'll kind of uh, show you folks uh, the website a little bit later. But basically, we kind of just struck up a conversation where I explained to Mark that I was looking for a way to structure our organization into what I had called it. At that time, focus groups. I wanted a way to, you know, group our members around certain topics that, um, you know, we could collaboratively discuss, um, you know, share best practices and all of that sort of thing. And so, um, he basically brought it to my attention. He said, "Hey, do you want to get involved with the Stig One to One?" And uh, I said, "Oh, sure." You know, so it just kind of, uh, just kind of came up. But basically. Um, he explained that the stake one to one is actually one of the newer stake groups, and so, um, and it just happened so that um, our conference last year here in Hawaii, um, we uh, there was a Hawaii edu ed educational leadership summit, which is um, it was basically uh, intended for all of our leaders to come together, and the topic was about one to one, and so um, the definition of one to one. Um, you know, it's basically about using mobile devices. Um, it's actually an ongoing discussion right now as part of the group because um, uh, on one hand, when we say one-to-one, -one, we think that one device to one student. Mm -hmm. But the fact of the matter is that it actually overlaps into a lot of other areas beyond just the device itself. I mean, there are applications um, that um, you have to consider if you're going to use it on all devices. There's actually um, uh, professional development issues that are related to uh, using uh, a one-to-one -one environment. Um, there are, you know, digital textbooks, um, which is librarians. Um, there's more technical aspects, you know, how to image uh, and deploy uh, mobile devices, whether it's iPads, um, Chromebooks. Um, you know, just regular laptops and that sort of thing. So the topic is actually fairly broad, mm -hmm. but um, but basically, basically, Mark Stanley uh, in Alaska, they had um, actually done a study on one to one and had basically been involved, I guess, in in deploying a one to one strategy in their state. And so that's part of the resources that I'm going to be kind of going over. So um, that's kind of just in a nutshell. I think it, 
really kind of um, hard to actually define exactly what one-to-one -one and what exactly the state one-to-one -one is doing at this moment other than the fact that we're trying to uh, expand the, um, the this particular group in terms of creating focuses that do, uh, you know, whatever it is to support, uh, you know, implementing a one-to-one -one environment. Mm. So, so, so basically, um, that's all part of um, all the resources that we're trying to put together. But at the same time, trying to define how do we, how can we move forward, you know, with this topic? Because as I um, was explaining, if you look at the other special interest groups, I mean, there, there are some other groups which topic-wise, um, it, it can overlap. And so, mm -hmm. and I think that's also something um, ISTI as an organization is realizing, uh, at least, you know, trying to uh, structure the organization uh, to support the technology that um, is being used in the classroom. Mm. And that changes all the time, doesn't it? Oh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So does that mean that this includes uh, BYOT, Bring Your Own Technology, as well? It could be, you know, like I said, there's a lot of, um, uh, I guess, definition that are being, you know, uh, I guess, um, redefined as technology changes. You know, what does it look like? I think one to one a few years ago might have just been uh, having a laptop, um, but now mm -hmm. with mobile devices and BYOD, uh, that's kind of changing the, uh, you know, the scenario to what what it, what does it look like to have a one to one mm -hmm. environment and um, so I, I see it as it's going to be constantly evolving, but one-to-one -one is broad enough that, um, at least within the history level, um, I thought it was a great. It was a great point to start with because without getting too specific, we could have a special interest group that could encompass, you know, a wide range of topics, and then from there we can, you know, we can kind of, uh, you know. I guess, uh, you know, create smaller groups into certain focused areas. So, um, for example, some of the areas we we're looking at is like Google Apps. It could be one whole group in itself. Um, you know, just managing mobile devices could be a whole other thing. Um, learning management system um, could be another area. Um, digital textbooks, you know, could be another area and that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. So I just introduced it as a starting point that, um, this would be the first group, a uh, special interest group, that we would try to, uh, I guess, bring our members together because um, we really did not have any formal structure. Um, we, would, we, uh, you know, at our schools at the future conference, we just had like-minded sessions, which people would just kind of go through and talk about. But for continuity, uh, we really didn't have anything that really aligned to, uh, you know, the ISTE conference and. So the strategy behind this is that if members were to say get involved with the state group here, it would pr provide them a conduit to connect with the larger national group. So some of the other larger uh, stakes, like the one for uh, educational technology coordinators or SIG ETC, ETC, and that's um, led by Lynn Horiuchi, um, who I believe might be another. Um, session altogether, but basically, um, you know, she, you know, works with members not only locally but also on a national level, so, mm -hmm. uh, but but as I mentioned, because the SIG one-to-one -one is relatively new, they're not quite organized in the same fashion some mm -hmm. of these other SIGs are, so, um, but that's also something that, you know, um, getting involved with the board, uh, with Mike Stanley and, um, and then we have a few others that I'll show you on the website um, are trying to really, um, I guess, you know, take it to the next level kind of thing. So, um, so with that, um, maybe I can show you some of the uh, resources that, um, that, that I great. have. Um, so I let me share. I wanted to say that we did try to get Lynn to come on tonight as well. Oh, she okay. has a um, she had a prior commitment, but um, we definitely want her to come on another time. Okay. Yeah. So I'm going to share my screen. This is a document um, which I've um, listed various uh, resources. So the first one that I want to um, point out is the Hawaii Society for Technology and Education uh, website. 
and basically um, this is our local affiliate uh, for ISD. Uh, as Lynn explained, there is uh, a membership for the ISD organization, which is the larger national level, but there's also a separate uh, membership uh, for our local affiliate level. Uh, at the moment, there, you can actually join for free. Um, you just go through where it says join history and uh, basically uh, that will kind of officially um, make you a affiliate member. Um, at the moment, as I mentioned, we're kind of a new um, and young organization, but we're looking for ways to add value to being a member. But the things that we offer at the moment are uh, we do have meet and greet events where you know we go to uh, like a happy hour. Um, we've had it at um, Ryan's Grill at um, Ward Ward uh, Center, and um, and then we're looking to you know. Um, have uh, um, the special interest groups as another way for to bring our members together. Um, we also at the ISTE conference last year we had sort of a joint uh, Alaska Hawaii affiliate uh, social gathering at the conference itself. So that's another uh, event that we bring our members together. Um, but basically, uh, you know, this is the organization um, we are working to. Uh, also expand expand it uh, statewide, meaning that on each of our neighbor islands we have um, smaller groups that are connected to the larger HISTI uh, organization, but basically kind of doing the same uh, type of events of meet and greet, trying to organize uh, members around certain topics that they would like to collaborate and share best, best uh, practices. So. Um, uh, so that's the website for our state one to one. Um, I'm sorry, our history organization. I also have here is the uh, Alaska Society for Technology in Education, which um, I have to say they they have a really beautiful website. I mean, it's just um, uh, very nicely done. Um, but they have a lot of information. Um, there are different. Um, they offer a lot more programs than we do because obviously Alaska, from what I understand, is one of the oldest of uh, ISTE affiliates uh, nationwide. Mm -hmm. So, um, so it's good to see um, we do have their conference is coming up. Uh, actually, I think end of the month and um, or, or next week. But basically. Um, uh, you know, they they have a, their own version of a local educational technology conference, and um, this is their website. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, Dr. Mike Stanley is their current president, and he's the one that I've done a lot of collaboration with. Um, they actually go way back in terms of their, I guess, collaboration and partnership with Hawaii. Um, we share a lot of similarities. Uh, in terms of uh, having a rich uh, culture, uh, geographic, you know, um, islands. I mean, you know, they don't they have islands, but you know, but basically, it's just spread out and having to support uh, teachers and students uh, remotely. Um, they also have this IDEA contest, which um, is basically like a, a video con contest that, um, uh, from my understanding, would they kind of um, it, this was like a, a previous uh, conference that the DOE used to put on called East School Conference and we used to have an island movie video conference and basically um, the, the format is very similar. So, um, But Mark, Dr. Mark Stanley was also the one to introduce to me the uh, their research and one-to-one -one guidebook which uh, they have this website, it's called one-to-oneguidebook.org um, for those that are um, looking to implement one-to-one, -one, uh, this is an, a free resource. Uh, you can go to the website. Um, it uh, it has right here the guidebook on the side here. Uh, let's see if I can make my screen a little smaller. But basically, the index is here. It it goes over the research and the strategy that they have, um, I guess, uh, found out what will work best. 
um, this was something that they shared with our at our Hawaii Educational Leadership Summit uh, with our leaders and um, and in helping schools with best practices uh, as far as implementing one-to-one -one strategy. Um, part of the goal was to help, uh, I guess, um, establish a more common understanding as to what one-to-one -one looks like. Um, to help schools um, having to reinvent things from scratch when they've already laid out uh, a lot of the research and best practices mm. um, and, and basically help answer a lot of questions uh, to save uh, schools time you know having to go and find out uh, you know how to, uh, to, do, to do certain things so um, so That's this fantastic. is an excellent, yeah. This is an excellent research that I recommend um, going to. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, we have a Schools of the Future conference, which is actually coming up this coming November six and seven. But uh, but basically, as part of this event, we have a um, um, Hawaii Educational Leadership Summit, which we uh, Mark Dr. Mark Stanley last year came down along with um, Cheryl Lemke. I'm um, not sure if you're familiar with her, but uh, Cheryl is the CEO and president of the Materi Group, and so I'm pulling up the website here, but um, she's done basically a lot of extensive uh, 21st century uh, educational technology um, uh, keynote presentation. Um, she was very instrumental in, in helping um, uh, in presenting at the um, Hawaii Educational Leadership Summit. But you can go here, um, and this is her profile here. And so, like I said, she's uh, done extensive uh, presentations across the nation at various conferences and and whatnot. But um, but she's been very supportive of our of our one-to-one uh, -one efforts. Um, so let's see here. So let's jump right into the the ST State website. So um, as I mentioned, um, SIG one to one is one of the newer uh, special interest groups, but Mark Stanley here is the uh, current president and then we have uh, various um, people that are part of the, the initial committee and uh, for those of you that may be um, knowledgeable about other large um, deployment, one-to-one uh, -one deployment. Um, uh, Steve Zanotti here is um, part of the LA Unified one-to-one -one deployment. Um, and then we also have some other board members down at the bottom here, including myself. But um, they are basically um, involved in different types of one-to-one -one deployments across the nation. Um, and um, basically we're, we're all trying to, um, you know, we just kind of came together and we kind of brainstormed different ways as to how we can support our members. So one of the things that we're promoting is um, our uh, this website and there is a link here, if you look on the right side of the screen, it's called the uh, SIG one to one wiki. And if you click on it, it's a wiki page, and this is kind of where we put out our um, information in, in terms of one-to-one. -one. Um, I have to be honest to say it's a little bit dated, and, and I think there's a lot of room for expansion, but, but the whole idea was to trying to uh, put all of our one-to-one uh, -one related information all in one place, and basically this is what it happens to be. Um, there is ongoing uh, discussion as to how we can expand and improve it, but I think for those that are looking to jump into uh, one to one, you'll find a lot of um, at least uh, preliminary information here. Uh, I'll just kind of quickly go through the um, the topics, but uh, these are links from past uh, ISTE conferences. As I mentioned, um, being a part of the stick one to one, you um, you you also are. Um, have the opportunity to network with the larger group and at the ISTE conferences they normally have a uh, SIG one-to-one -one, uh, session which is uh, on the board, the entire board is there, um, people from all over the nation and world go there and um, uh, 
Uh, sometimes there are, um, like I said, last year was the first time I've been, but my understanding is that's the time when the board meets, uh, they, they discuss any type of, um, uh, you know, issue that need to be uh, shared with the whole, the rest of the SIG one-to-one -one members. Uh, when I was there, we had, um, basically, there was a breakout, you know, different groups, so they talked yeah, different topics, and you just kind of go to the table, meet, you know, other fellow, you know, teachers, tech coordinators, I mean, you name it, um, and and we just talk story, just like how we're doing tonight, you know, everybody just, mm -hmm. you know, talks about what they're doing, what kind of problems they're having, um, they try to uh, find out, you know, how, what other people are doing, and what, you know, what suggestion, um, that can help them with their particular one-to-one uh, -one deployment. And so uh, the uh, presentations and whatnot are shared here, so you can uh, bas basically um, pull it down from here. One-to-one um, -one conferences, um, there's a lot of other, uh, uh, I guess, um, uh, events that are, you know, they are related to one-to-one -to -one and um, are shared here. Um, we've got links to one-to-one -to -one schools. Um, there's obviously a lot more. Not all the information is current, and that's something we're, we're also trying to discuss how to, um, uh, you know, expand and improve the uh, wiki. Uh, we've got one-to-one -one iPad info. Um, and by the way, I believe um, the other thing that we're looking for is uh, members to be actively involved in, in, in sharing and updating the wiki uh, with other you know, fellow SIG one-to-one. -one. So uh, that's another thing. Mm -hmm. um, so that's really the essence of the SIG one-to-one uh, -one web resources. Uh, in addition to that, we've um, Plan a series of webinars, which I believe, as an IST member, you will get like a email invite uh, to participate. And basically, just like tonight, um, you we can just sit in on the webinar. Um, uh, the two that I know that um, what we plan and uh, got approved was the Main Learning Technology Initiative and the Los Angeles One-to-One -one Initiative. And um, and I believe there's one more uh, that the SIG one to one is planning, but it has not been finalized. But um, I believe the, all the rest of the ISD special interest groups uh, do offer similar types of webinars depending on their particular area. But um, as I mentioned, being a being a member, you know, you have access to those webinars. Um, whether you're participating live or for playback. Uh, let's see here. The, I have a link here for the next uh, ISD Atlanta conference. Um, if you are going, um, there is going to be, like I said, every, it's my understanding every year there is a special interest group um, uh, session there. and. Um, as well as um, what we do at the board level, we actually had to review all of the um, presentation proposals and give us our SIG one-to-one -one endorsement to say, you know, these are the SIG one-to-one -one recommended sessions. And uh, if you have not been to issue before, I can just tell you it's just extremely overwhelming. I mean, there's just so many sessions. Uh, even during the time there, you're probably not going to be able to get to all of it. So it's just a way to help members know that, you know, from the SIG level, these are the ones that you should definitely check out and, um, you know, try to put it into your schedule. Um, so that's uh, just a way to help organize things. And, and again, every each one of the other SIGs do the same as well. Uh, I believe when you go through the program, I'm probably not quite up yet, but um, as you're navigating through it, uh, you'll see uh, certain, uh, sometimes you have logos in, in the program that kind of signifies um, uh, one stick one-to-one -one related session. Um, sometimes you, uh, when you're actually building your your agenda for the week, you can actually filter things according to the special interest groups. So it's just one way of doing it. You don't have to do it that way, but 
uh, again, because there's so many sessions, it's just a way to help uh, members uh, figure out what, um, you know, where to go and what session to attend. Um, so again, if you are going to ISTE, um, just know that, um, you know, that it's one way to, to expand your network of colleagues. If you aren't able, if you're not able to attend the conference, um, there is still going to be, uh, there are other ways to connect um, with members. Um, that's something, again, we're, we're trying to um, expand on, but um, but I believe like the STIG ETC, which is the one that Lynn Horiuchi um, is involved with, um, she also, I mean, it's a much more extensive network, and from my understanding of that, um, you know, she, she gets emails from all over the all over the world, all, all of the nation, nation, and basically she, uh, you know, she helps them with whatever questions they have. Um, and, I, and I believe that's basically the similar thing that we're looking forward um, to do. But because SIG one to one is so broad, we couldn't possibly be experts at every single area under it, you know. Um, but I think that's kind of where we're looking for guidance from our members. What are the areas are you looking for support? And um, I just know from my personal experience, um, Google Apps is like one big area. And so we're looking for a group to kind of, uh, you know, be experts at that and to help, you know, other schools um, mm -hmm. with their particular deployment. Um, we also have a lot of um, expertise in, in the actual hardware. Uh, whether you're purchasing, managing them, imaging, you know, that kind of thing. So mm -hmm. um, that's another thing that, you know, a lot of people uh, are trying to figure out. And, um, you know, having members who are real comfortable with that, uh, they can help other members kind of thing. Uh, I wanted to ask, um, Brett, is there a um, community or um, a Twitter group or kind of an ongoing or is it too new to have an ongoing um, place where people can ask questions and find out more about SIG one to one Yeah, so we have um, at least at the history level locally, um, uh, we are trying to leverage social media. So, um, um, although it's not quite, we, it, we haven't gotten it to the point where it's SIG one-to-one -one specific, um, but the goal is to try to um, build it up so that we can have, like how you say, a social community up around these uh, special interest groups. Mm -hmm. And so we could have a, either a Twitter, uh, you know, account just for SIG one-to-one related. Um, for what I've done actually is, um, if if you're familiar with uh, Ed Moto, is um, it's, a, mm -hmm. it's sort of a social media uh, environment. Is uh, I have a group. Uh, well, I was looking to establish a group, but um, but because we haven't quite gotten our members together, it's not quite. Um, it's basically, we don't have any members in that group for discussion. But the idea is that uh, depending on whatever social media works best for the members then we would leverage, you know, that particular environment. So yeah. uh, I know we have Google Plus here, uh, we've got, you know, Twitter, uh, we've got Facebook, we've got Edmodo, and so uh, I think at the history level, we're, we're trying to try to figure out without getting it, uh, having it to be too confusing by having too many different, you right. know, areas to go to that we try to somehow streamline that. So that's kind of an ongoing discussion we're having. Mm -hmm. um, but um, yeah, I think um, Twitter would be a great where to start because there are m the majority of the people are there already. Okay. Um, yeah. So I'm mean, that's just my thought on it, and I would I mm -hmm. just did a um, a little uh, search in Twitter because I was actually looking for an organization, but uh, I see people are using. Um, the hashtag SIG one to one for Twitter. Mm. So mm. Um, there's a little bit of conversation going on there. But I would think that is like the main, more mainstream than anything else if okay. you wanted to as a starting board. What do you think, uh, Michelle? Yeah, I agree. In fact, I just was looking now when you folks were talking, and um, uh, there's a special interest group for librarians um, in Twitter. And then they have, they were actually there though, they were advertising. Um, Google Hangout, Linda, so I thought that was kind of neat, too. It just shows how things are inter interweaving, I guess. But um, I just wanted to comment, too, Brent, on um, how 
you know, with the SIG one to one, originally I was kind of thinking it's for big rollouts, like when you're going whole whole school rollout, or you know, I was thinking even more like private schools, all the devices or the DOEs one to one. But actually, your um, SIG is perfect for anybody who's just even looking to integrate some mobile devices at their classroom level. Or today, I was talking to a librarian who was. Um, kind of frustrated with her iPad management. So really, um, SIG one to one could reach any user, couldn't it? Oh yeah, absolutely. And um, so that's um, kind of actually at the board level, we're trying to uh, we're having that discussion because quite honestly, uh, I, you know, my perception is at the moment is that it was kind of just on the hardware level. But but when I kind of um, we tried. You know, uh, I guess elaborating on it, that it, it came to the realization that it's much more than just the device itself, and it, and, and it can touch on a lot of different areas. Um, but I think it's just a matter of how the uh, members um, would take to it. Um, obviously, we're a small group, but then maybe if you had you know thousands and thousands of members, it would just become unmanageable having that many. Uh, you know, people all in one group, and it makes more sense to split them up into the uh, uh, you know smaller. Uh, SIGs. So, um, but I think that for us, that was kind of more the long term. I think so. Right now, where we're at, it, it's um, the, the SIG one to one would be a great starting point to, uh, you know, just to encompass all, uh, everyone at the moment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and yeah. I like, Linda, your point too, then, to, um, to think about, though, bringing in some social media because I think, Brett, that's a way that people who are looking to ask their questions will connect. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, that's true. I love all the links you shared. And, Linda, I wondered, will you put the show notes um, public for people after the broadcast? Do you post that with the link? Well, it's actually um, on there already. I can oh, give great. people okay. the link. Um, it's yeah. always a bit.ly link, so it's http colon slash slash. I should do what Michael does and put it on the screen, but I haven't gotten around to doing that yet. I will. It's a bit.ly bit dot ly slash gr for Google Rocks, gr25 sigs. So that will actually be on the YouTube recording as well, so people can get it. And I wanted to comment, Brett, on how wonderful those notes are. My gosh. Yeah. Um, I, I, there might have been one other person that had, uh, uh, as a guest, that had such a detailed uh, resources for people. I especially like the one-to-one -one, um, guide. Mm -hmm. I think that's going to be fantastic. Um, mm -hmm. So all of the your show notes, your uh, resources are just um, wonderful, and I really appreciate you putting that because most of the people who actually watch us watch us later. Um, so the show notes are really um, important for that at their leisure. You know, everyone has a schedule, so most of the time we have like three viewers right now, but mm -hmm. we do get um, more as the as it goes by and as people you know are interested in a particular topic, they might go back, and so that's what we're aiming for. So I this particular program, of course, is going to be just fantastic for Sig one to one. Um, because of the show notes and um, your expertise, so and your willingness to come on was really awesome. No yeah. problem. You didn't, have, you didn't have to be coaxed or anything. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> it's fantastic. I wanted to also share that um, the other thing that, um, at least with uh, Ed Moto, that um, uh, what I, I saw as um, maybe a challenge is that, especially if you're trying to share document. Or sometimes you have tip sheets, uh, you know, things like that that it's really hard to convey through a, a Twitter feed, that type of thing. And mm -hmm. uh, sometimes you have manuals, you know. So uh, having a place to centralize all of that is um, uh, what's going to be, you know, a, a challenge. So, you know, but again, it's in the end, it's really about the members. You know, whatever works for the members. Mm -hmm. You know, if it's Google Drive, Edmodo, just a wiki place, whatever. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, it, it, it kind of that kind of what we're looking for our members to help define. You know, what mm -hmm. what format works for you folks. You know, it may be that they only want Twitter, and that'd be fine too. But that kind of helps us figure out what direction to go. Uh, I also wanted to clarify uh, or further expand that. The one-to-one -one guidebook was just one of the resources, but um, but at that Hawaii Educational Leadership Summit, 
uh, there was actually a number of schools that op that participated in that particular event, and the, the the concept was that each one of them would craft their own quote guidebook, one to one guidebook, and mm -hmm. that would somehow collaborate and share so that um, they don't have to you know rewrite it themselves. So um, that could be a whole other session, maybe um, mm -hmm. you know in the future. But that's something to consider that. Um, and uh, what we're, we're looking for it is to continue that effort. Um, so we, um, because we, we find that, you know, whether you're public or private or charter schools and whatnot, you know, everyone is scrapping the same issues as far as, you know, procedures, strategies, that type of thing that um, instead of having to reinvent the wheel, you know, it's already kind of laid out for mm -hmm. you. So, um, so that's something that um, kind of like for the next steps. Um, we also want to are, are looking to connect the leadership, uh, you know, whether it's a superintendent for the department, uh, principals, uh, you know, that sort of thing. But really uh, involve them in the uh, our efforts because, uh, you know, by having I guess. Um, a closer alignment to what you know their vision is in terms of uh, where they see uh, 21st century learning or where they see one-to-one uh, -one, uh, being deployed in their schools and 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 really trying to make sure we're all on the same page because uh, we have found that sometimes when you say one-to-one -one, uh, you know what a, a principal thinks one-to-one -one is might be different from what a teacher thinks one-to-one -to, -one to what the tech coordinator thinks it is to, to what the student might think, you know, so we could just be completely all over the place and mm -hmm. so that was something that um, I think moving forward to uh, have more effective implementation is something that we needed to make sure that everyone kind of had at least the same, you know, was all on the same page in terms of what what does one-to-one -one look like. Right. Um, okay. Yeah, so, think, yeah, go ahead. I think one to one will change. Uh, oh yeah. Every, er, often. <laughs> it's a it's a moving target. Oh so, uh, yeah. I like the idea of um, each um, school. I don't know if you said school, but each organization or school f uh, formulating their own one to one guide because it does depend on your community, what you have, and what mm -hmm. is important to your community, and then sharing with other people. Who may have, um, you know, similar um, goals and such that they can pick and choose, kind of thing, kind of like a smorgasbord, mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. because we're we're never going to be, I don't think, on the same page. You know, we're, it's always moving. You don't get used to a to technology, mm -hmm. so it'll change in six months or six weeks or six days or six minutes. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. So I think getting an overall um, somehow, I think the idea, the reason I like social media is that it's a place to know what's happening at that moment and, and um, um, grabbing what you need for yourself at that moment. Um, and maybe um, helping other people as well because not everybody's into social media. Mm -hmm. and so um, those who are not can benefit from those of us maybe who are and can uh, disseminate that information, and it's always um, an ongoing process. I think I, I don't think we'll ever get to you know saying this is one to one because it mm -hmm. does change. It, it'll be different for different people. Yeah, although it's uh, constantly evolving, um, I think the other strat strategy is that um, it'll help. Uh, I guess the whether it's leadership or the tech coordinator, kind of um, speed up the process. Because you know, as I mentioned, right. um, when you have people all over the place and some are trying to do it from scratch, I mean, it's time lost by the time that you know you really kind of figure things out. When someone may have already right. done it, or it can help you cut through the chase, and you, you know, you, you can just more quickly deploy applications or, or whatever it is, and instead of you know taking a year and then finding out that oh they're already moving on to something else already, you know, yeah. so. Mm -hmm. So I think, um, but I think the nice thing too behind one to one is that um, that dynamic uh, evolving, you know, uh, one to one scenario will be part of it. That that will be part of the strategy in terms of how do we more quickly uh, deploy and implement 
uh, new technologies without having to wait a, a year or longer I mean, just mm -hmm. to make it available to students. Uh, right, you know, that's something right. that, especially with Web 2.0 apps, it, uh, that's kind of a whole other area where, uh, you know, there's just so many of them coming out and, and they're so uh, powerful and they're free and whatnot, and, but we can't, we're not, you know, implementing them quickly enough to really leverage them in the classroom. So I think um, that's something that um, as part of the, uh, you know, in a one-to-one -one environment, it, it is somehow incorporating those uh, being uh, more dynamic and, you know, more, uh, you know, quick to, you know, implement the kind of thing. So, so I think right. it, it's going to be very exciting, especially like you mentioned, BYOD is a whole other thing that, yeah. you know, it's just, just a completely different uh, environment than just having, uh, you know, buying uh, iPads and laptops. Right. Hey, Brett, I have a hard question and mm -hmm. um, I'll, I'll I'm not sure how to really word it, but mm -hmm. you know, um, one of the components in the planning guide, and I think Linda, you're right. Even though um, the types of devices are always changing, um, or the way we roll it out might be different for our community, the one thing that is, um, I think, the same across the board is that we re need a really strong um, infrastructure. You know, in internet and connection and. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that the DOE schools that are just now going to one-to-one, -one, I think that their bandwidth was increased a little bit. And mm -hmm. I guess my hard question for you is, um, do, you, um, do you envision um, NSSB and the different um, more network and tech support people being involved in the SIG one-to-one? -one, or are they already? Or I'm just wondering if there's some light at the end of the tunnel for the rest of us who aren't part of the one-to-one -one, but want a more <laughs> robust internet? Well, I think it, it's just kind of a given they, they need to be more involved. The reality of it, as, I mean, if they are, I mean, I think they are to some extent. Um, I think that's part of, of the direction the department is kind of slowly moving towards. I think uh, realizing that we cannot work um, independently as in the past because you know we're so dependent on the network and at the same time um, you know they need to be more aware of what we're doing in the classroom and what types of applications are needed uh, and need to be made available to students um, infrastructure in terms of wireless uh, connectivity uh, needs to be uh, you know upgraded and expanded where needed in order to effectively uh, implement one-to-one -one strategies uh, because you know without say the wireless uh, capacity uh, you just cannot effectively um, set up that type of environment and so but you know I think what what you know I guess I'm looking forward is a little more I guess collaborative effort at least at the department state level which is you know I'll be honest just to say it on air that it's a little lagging but um, it uh, it just happening in pockets, but I think in order to really fully support um, all schools that um, I think everyone, there needs to be more involvement at that level. But at the same time, um, that's also part of um, our efforts through HISTI uh, we, and, and, and the Leadership Summit event um, is where we, we're trying to bring together the stakeholders, not only within the department, but also statewide because um, you know, by having uh, you know everyone come together, it adds more power, and and instead of you know individual uh, organization trying to figure it out themselves, uh, I think we we share the common uh, you know challenges and issues and whatnot across all uh, educational institutions. That um, by having their respective peers come together, I think it it, it you know. It, Create some more collaborative, um, I guess you know, atmosphere uh, in being being able to uh, you know discuss and uh, address different you know challenges, whether it's uh, technical, whether it's uh, budget, you know, sometimes it's policy, you know, uh, you know, there's, there's just a wide range of things, but um, but without a venue, it's really hard to make that happen. So last year was really the first year we were able to offer, uh, you know, that summit event, which I think there's tremendous uh, potential in it to continue it forward. So uh, hoping we can, um, you know, continue expanding on it. 
Um, but if anything, at least uh, being able to connect uh, either members and whatnot through the larger uh, national group, uh, you know, will provide additional opportunities for that. But um, but I think more importantly is that we just continue through the stake one to one the uh, you know just the awareness of what we're doing, um, mm -hmm. just trying to explain to uh, you know just at all levels whether it's the leader leadership. Uh, in the classroom, the technical people that, you know, who are all striving for the same things and that we have uh, resources available that we can all tap into and share. And um, and Alaska has it, it, been very, um, have extensive experience with this. So um, that's another consideration. You know, I was just going to mention that for future sessions we could do a co-Alaska, uh, Hawaii type of Hangout session or something like that. I mean, you know, we can that would actually. That be fun. Yeah, we can kind of. I think they're only about two hours ahead, so it's a little bit later for them, but not too late. Like our, I think that's a great idea. Hey, wait, I have fantastic. a follow-up question. I think you gave a really good answer, though. I put you on the spot, and mm -hmm. I think you're also <laughs> kind of reminding us that um, no matter who we are, classroom teacher, librarian, tech coordinator, it's really important we get involved locally with HISD and. Um, look for the um, information about the Hawaii Educational Leadership Summit. I th you're going to do it in conjunction with um, Schools of the Future again, and my next question is, as Linda said, I always have questions. <laughs> do you think that you folks will open it up to um, DOE, or I, I heard you say even private schools, but um, not just the one-to-one -one schools? Do you think it might be more an open invitation to those of us who are ready and eager to have these discussions? Um... Okay, I kind of make sure. So, the question is, you you want to know if the Hawaii Educational Leadership Summit will be opened up to all schools? I, I didn't quite get that last part. Yeah, so. kind of. If it could just be, um, you know, some there are some schools who are more ready than others. Like, um, you know, Mike Fricano, he's one of our other panelists usually, and I think mm -hmm. Mike would have been a great voice to have at um, the Hawaii Educational Leadership Summit. Mm -hmm. um, oh, there's some guys at Evan Mackay doing really amazing things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. um, just so, yeah, could we consider opening it up a little? Um, yeah, I mean, there, there's really no formal format or, or arrangement other than the fact of that common goal of how do we, how can we support uh, the one-to-one -one efforts and uh, whether that. Um, you know, at least what we started off with, we brought in people from the outside to uh, kind of help, you know, help start the process. But I think the ultimate goal is is to tap into uh, the local, uh, you know, schools. Again, it doesn't matter whether it's private, public, or charter, or whatever. But just the whole concept of bringing together uh, every, any anyone that's involved in one to one and sharing the best practices so whether you have um, we could certainly offer uh, so one of the one of the ideas is maybe having a you know regular one-to-one sig one-to-one workshops then you know we could have Evan Mackay do one session we could have uh, Punahou or Kamehameha or whatever you know other other schools kind of offer you know their expertise and, and, and help guide schools especially the ones that uh, you know, I already have extensive experience, and they can just kind of share that with other, uh, you know, other schools. So, um, it, uh, possibilities are wide open. I think it just, again, it's just all about um, our members. I mean, it, like I said, we're only about two years old. A, a lot of the efforts has been primarily just at the within the board level, but we really want our members to really drive. What the organization is, because it's not really about, you know, say like you know being on the executive board saying we're going to do this or whatever. I mean, I think it's really more about what what will work best for our members and 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 add the most value. So, so we're really trying to reach out to our members um, or at least get um, more people involved with HST and really um, use that as sort of the conduit, um, not only locally but to, you know, like I said, link to the larger national group. I mean, I do know there are different conversations outside of the context of the HST affiliate, but um, but really that was my, um, I guess, uh, you know, aha moment where when I went to the conference that I realized that, you know, we're just a small group on this island. When you go to the ISTE conference, then you, re you realize that, 
we're not the only ones dealing with one to one. I mean, this is a, happening all over the globe. I mean, you know, it's not only in the United States, but we have international people that um, present, uh, you know, their their uh, implementation and strategies, um, you know, that work for them. And and there's just a whole wide range. So it's um it's 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 important to have people make that connection. Um, mm -hmm. Otherwise, uh, you know, it, it makes you feel like you're all by yourself. You know, trying to mm -hmm. make things happen yourself. Fantastic! Wow, Brett, you taught us so much today. I really like your um, what you say about making connections with people, because I think, and that you're trying to spread the word um, throughout because I think uh, it's important for all of us to do that, to um, connect with other people. That's the key to it. And um, um, I'm kind of wrapping it up in case you didn't know. <laughs> no, no problem. We're, yeah, we're, okay. hit, <laughs> we're, hitting, we're getting close to the top of the hour. Um, yeah. I really, really appreciate you coming on. I learned a lot. Um, I, I, had, uh, I went to ISTE in San Diego and really has, haven't um, continued but I definitely am interested again in the special interest groups, mm -hmm. and it's uh, yet another way to um, to connect. Mm -hmm. And I really appreciate you coming on. Um, Anne, did you have any questions of Brett or any comments? Anne's going yeah, to San Antonio sure. next week. Oh. Yeah, for robotics. No, I, I, oh, cool. I was just trying to sign up for HST. <laughs> there you go. You just want a want a member. She's going to sign up for HSTE. Very yeah, good. Perfect. Awesome. We're looking forward to having you be a part of our community. Yes, and I think I'm a member of HST as well. Okay, yeah. so we're going to wrap it up. Unless you have any parting words, um, Brett, you want to leave us with? No, it was, uh, I had a great time uh, sharing everything that we're doing with the uh, with uh, not only history but also on the stake one to one on the national level. Mm -hmm. um, like yes. I said, um, there's a, a lot of resources, uh, a lot of different opportunities to get involved. Um, I highly encourage you folks to uh, just take a look at the, the, all the links that I've put up and feel free to contact me. Um, I didn't put my contact on here, but it's just a place to put it. Well, I didn't know uh, if you had it. You can put it on the show notes if you like. Okay. Yeah. So I'll put it up there. Um, but okay. like I said, feel free to contact me if you um, have any questions. And um, uh, yeah. So thank you very much for having me on. Very good. Much appreciated that you came on so uh, and, and taught us so much. So um, as I said, we're at the top of the hour. Another great show. We're going to be doing number 26 next week. And I think it's going to be about World Read Aloud Day, um, which is coming up in March, and we are hoping to have a special guest. Um, we won't spill the beans because we don't know if he's going to come on or not, but um, that'll be fun. Um, it's all about reading, and that'll be a, a great show. So, um, without further ado, we're going to end this um, show tonight, and thank you again, Brett, for coming, Anne and Michelle. Much appreciated. Good conversation as usual. So, right. aloha for now. Thank you. Aloha.